Hello shining friend. Welcome to today's video where I am making art on cardboard with hearts. As you saw earlier in the video, I was collecting the piece of paper that I wanted to potentially use and cut out hearts to use on this project. And there have been a few that I've cut out or laid out like those right there. I just really didn't like them. So I kind of just keep going through all of these and cut out ones and colors that are within the scheme of that I'm aiming for. In the beginning of the video, I showed you me looking in a journal and it is what I am going to be inspired for for this project. The one that was created in the journal I did back in 2020 when I was creating daily in that journal recovering from melanoma surgery. Well, that particular piece that I created in there, that piece actually was inspired by, as I mentioned in my last video, an artist that I like to listen to her podcast and follow her on Instagram and stuff, and her name is Allison James. I was inspired by something that she posted one day, and that's how I created that piece in the journal. But I, that piece has always been one of my exact favorite in the journal, so I knew whenever I was getting ready to create this heart piece that I wanted to be inspired again you know by that piece you can see me pulling it into frame a little bit there it's a very textured piece um i use several of the same pieces of paper if i ended up finding them on hand some of them i didn't like the pink heart that you see there to the right is not something that was used in the original journal entry but the color is, and I just liked the pop of that it was glitter and what have you. So as I continue to trim these hearts up to get them to what I would call an ideal fit for this project, <coughs> I will keep going through the materials that I want to be able to use on here. A lot of this has to do with texture. As you can see that piece there, that is one of my absolute favorite pieces to create with. I bought that at Hobby Lobby. They have like a little special textured section of paper kind of close to, or I don't know, they may have it mingled into by now. People change stuff up so much in their stores and I haven't really shopped in there in a while, but um, you know, like for the paper where you buy to do scrapbooking and what have you. But here I'm going to uh, get a piece of burlap going. I really love using burlap in a lot of my pieces. Years ago, I bought a whole bundle of burlap at, I believe it was Joanne, Han no, Hancock's is what it was. That place is not even here anymore. I don't even know if they exist or if it was just the one located by me or what. But anyway, I bought a, a big old bundle of it and honey, I got so much left of it. But anyway, I love burlap anyway. I've used it so much through the years, so it's fine. It'll probably last me a lifetime. But anyway, here I go. Um, I got my Mod Podge out, and I'm going to get these pieces glued down on the cardboard um, before I get ready to add paint and what have you. But also, in the be beginning of the video, you'll have seen where I was collecting my pieces of cardboard getting ready for this project from some a box. I was standing in my kitchen and trimming that box up, but I had just recently cleaned out. I have an office downstairs, and I keep boxes a lot for two different reasons. One, reselling purposes. I need uh, to be able to package stuff and uh, also to be able to create with. I love to have cardboard on hand, but through the holidays, my cardboard stash can kind of get thick. So I had gone through my office and found a few boxes that I knew I wanted to set aside getting ready for this project and other projects to come. 
and the rest of them I set by the back door for um, my husband to take care of. And anyway, so I'm going to continue here gluing these pieces on. And I hope that you are inspired by this video to create something similar of your own, so to speak. Just always remember that use what you have on hand. Collect throughout your days, no matter where you go. Uh, you know, look at things that come in the mail. Look at boxes that come through your house. You know, if you have to go to the store and buy some, some of the texture paper, like I said, I have bought. But a lot of stuff can really and truly be recycled from your everyday life. So I encourage you to come up with some pieces if you don't already have them on hand and take on something like this. It will be a little to no expense on your behalf if you just have your basic supplies like some sort of glue. You don't have to have Mod Podge Fiddle. You can use a glue stick for all that. You know, you can pick those up at the dollar store. I'm going to finish gluing these in place and here in just a minute we'll get ready to put the paint on the actual background. I was having a little trouble finding the exact color gray that I wanted. I knew there in my journal the background was a, a gray hint tone, but you know that's part of creating uh, off of a piece that you're being inspired by. The point is is to do a recreation and make it original. Um, you know that way you're not having to really match anything. That's what makes it stand out and be on its own. But anytime you're having trouble getting that shade going, especially like on a piece like this, if you just kind of keep working and keep kind of mixing, 
even if each little section ends up being a little bit shade of darker, a little bit shade of light, you know, that's what gives it depth and interest and what have you. And so don't be afraid to just keep going and cre keep creating on top of and smearing and adding more and mixing more. Now you could choose to stop at this point where your background is painted up and you've got all your pieces, uh, you know, glued in place and what have you. I mean, it makes for a nice piece, but you know me, I'm not going to stop there. I'm ready to dive in and get a little more paint and marks and mess on here. So continue joining me. That particular sponge that I'm using to put that white paint on was a dried up sponge that I had set to the side, but hey, that's the way I create. I don't let anything go to waste and I use it till I just absolutely can't use it anymore. So, but in, in actuality, really a reason I, I mentioned that is because if it was a soft, more damp sponge or so to speak, you potentially could have covered that whole heart without, you know, having the paint even is what I'm trying to say you could have. But that's how I like to create is where it's kind of, you know, rustic, not, not full, even. So that's why it may have appeared that I was struggling a little bit. That, hey, I'm really struggling trying to get this pink paint out of that tube. That thing sometimes dries up and maybe even getting a little low, who knows. I'm not real sure how my finger became the main paint 
object in this in this episode here but um you know not saying i don't ever paint with my fingers because i do but typically i do use paint brushes or sponges or what have you but for some reason my finger got involved in a lot so don't be afraid to jump in there and get your fingers a little dirty and get creating While creating and looking at a piece to be inspired, it can be a double-edged sword because you can tend to want to keep looking at that piece and think, oh, well, that's not the way that one looks, and then it messes up the whole concept. So just be mindful of that. You're probably wondering, well, Ashley, why are you putting more yellow on top of the piece of yellow paper already? But I wanted to add some just kind of for texture and depth and different shading. As I sit here and look at this piece in its current state as I edit this footage, I, looking at it, all the hearts and all the detail and stuff, I mean, it seriously could stand to be left just like it is. But when you're in the flow of things and in the moment, you just, you don't see it that way. That tool that I was using to dry the, the painting is a heated tool that I bought off of Amazon. I'll be honest with you, I don't particularly care for it. It's cord is about as short as a toaster cord. I currently don't have anything else in my studio. I usually use a hair dryer, so don't think you have to have fancy tools to get something dry. Pull out the hair dryer. I'm going to show you the entry in my journal just as a guiding tool for you to see where this, how this piece is about to go. Just to give you a reference since I didn't have it in frame to see how I'm about to add all the different colors to the tops of these hearts.
I somehow stopped the video and missed a part, so I'm showing you that I put that glitter on there while I was not filming, and I also added some white on top of the black part of that heart with the green. Sometimes you can't see things until you're on the outside looking in. And now as I sit here and watch myself, I put dabbing that black paint on those three hearts. I wish I wouldn't have done that, but hey, it is what it is. It just goes to show you that a lot of times when you're in the muck of something, you can't see everything. But those on the outside, or if you're the one on the outside of a situation, you can see things differently. Thank you. 